is because if you see Dickie Betts or Greg Almond, they will be the first to tell you it's true. Well, I know something else, too. You guys had two drummers. Yeah. And what happened later to the Almond Brothers? Oh, there you go. That's the other thing. That's the other <laughs> they thing. They come out with two drummers also. They came out with two drummers. Whereas the Almond Joys did not only have one drummer. You got it, man. So I'm telling you, it's a big influence there on those guys. A very big influence. And, and later on, you, you run into Dwayne Almond again, right? Yeah, Dwayne and I became very close cool right. friends. In fact, Dwayne had invited me to, I had a motorcycle and said, why don't you come with me? I'm going to go up to Georgia and back. And I said, I can't, man. I got some things to do here. And that was the trip where he got killed. Oh, wow. God bless him. And the Blues image ended up being so big that we said, let's go to Miami. Okay. And you know what happened from there. Well, yes, I knew because I was there. Yeah. And so you, you landed up at the image, I guess. Before, Before we got that, to the image, yes, there was a place called The World. Oh, okay. That's yeah. right. The world. And I'm like 17 years old by now. <laughs> and uh, Malcolm is, is teaching us all these British uh, blues songs that are right. coming from Britain. And we were doing Hendrix before anybody heard from him about Hendrix. Right. Doing Foxy Lady, Purple Haze. And the world, the stage was about 30 feet up, elevated. And you would play down to the people. Yes. Well, they had a strobe machine. We never had seen anything like this before. A smoke machine and a strobe. And brother, let me tell you something. When you're looking down, 30 feet down at the people, and the whole the whole room is pulsing like that, <laughs> you uh, scary, yes. yeah yeah it alters your mind quite right, a bit. Right. So we would always stand back from the stage. But Vanilla Fudge played there, yes. and a lot of really great bands, and they all said, "Man, you guys are really good." The Rascals. The Rascals played there absolutely, and uh, that's when we decided. We didn't want to play any more nightclubs. We wanted to strictly play places like the world, but there was no other place like the world. So we went and got some hippies that had money. One, one guy owned a big suntan company. Yes. And we said, would you like to invest in a nightclub, or rather a theater? And he said, yeah, absolutely. So we found a bowling alley, bowling alley that's on Collins. Collins. That is now Publix, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. And, and so... With the help of our hippie friends, we tore all the alleys down, made a flat floor, brought in two stages, two PAs, an opening night with Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention. And I was there. Unbelievable. I was there. And it was a very low roof, a very low ceiling. Yeah. I think that, that made the sound different and special. I think the acoustics of that place were unique. They were. Because of that, I think, because of that very low ceiling. Well, also, too, I mean, the vibes in that place. Oh, we, we had the Grateful Dead there, the Doors, the Cream. Cream, I was there with that one, too. Yardbirds. I yeah, the Yardbirds. That That's when I first met Jimmy Page. We became friends Which back then. Which brings me to one thing. I've noticed that throughout your career, all these great guitar players always want to play with you, always are seeking you to play with them. Uh -huh. I mean, I can go on um, uh, from Zappa to... Uh, Ted Nugent, uh, I, I just a video, yeah. you guys playing together at a local show in Miami, uh -huh. uh, Clapton, um, and of course Hendrix, yeah. who really liked your style very much. Yeah. And so what do you think that's about? <laughs> well, again, it was that evolution of the fact that I loved music. And, and, and you have your own style. Right? Yeah, yeah, I had my own style. It was the combination of the Latin thing yes. with the overdriven uh, blues thing. It's a very yeah. unique style, and it's very appealing to a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me tell you a little story. Uh, yeah. I was at uh, Joe Mayo's house in the canyon once, mm -hmm. and Zappa comes in, and uh, uh, Joe Mayo's all frustrated because the guitar we had was not working out, the guitar player. And so he says, uh, so Zappa says, well, what's your problem? He says, we need a guitar player. He says, how about me? You know, joking around. How about me? Yeah. And so, uh, Mayo says, you know what I mean? is It's like a Mike Pinera guy. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so, here's the funny part. Uh, Zappa grabs the guitar. Yeah. And his pajamas and, and starts doing an imitation of you. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, he says, I'm Mike Pinera. You know, he starts doing the overdrive stuff. Then yeah. Then, it was very funny. You had to be there. And, and so, everybody started cracking up. But that's, that's a great story. That's so sweet of him. And I, I really admired him. I mean, yeah, he, he was just a, a musical genius. It's amazing the stuff that, uh, that that he came up with. I mean, he introduced me to a lot of classical stuff that I had no idea had, could have any reference to, to, to you know, popular music or jazz or anything like that. We were awed by them. And also by their business spirit. The fact that they went to Greenwich Village and leased a nightclub for the whole summer. Do you think that influenced you uh, uh, as far as the image? Yeah. 
Well, we, as you know, going back to the Clearwater Star Spectacular and all that, I already had that already in had me. That I, I tried to. That's right. You if, there, if there was yes. no, if there was no offers, I would do it myself. You were creating the, the, yeah. the business. Nice. And something really nice happened. Uh, we went to go see them play, and it was the Garrick Theater. Mothers of Invention, yeah. yeah, in Greenwich Village. This is before you met him in Florida. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Manny and I went, took a train to nice. New York City, and saw them playing in their own club. And they were doing oh, stuff okay. like call any vegetable. Yes. And the chances are good yeah, yeah, the yeah. vegetable will respond to you. Right. Boom. I said, God, these guys are awesome. Right. So we became fans. Now, fast forward a year. Now he's coming to our club to play to open it, and we're the opening band. And it's called The Image, and we're the blues image. And after the show, Zappa comes up to me and says, I want you to come to my room tonight after the show. I said, oh, okay. So he told me the hotel they were at. And I'm trying to figure out what does he want with me. I walk into his room, and he says, sit down. I said, yes, sir. Whatever you say, man, I'm your biggest fan. Sit down. Yeah. And he says to me, you know, I'm going to change your name. From this moment on, at least to me, you are no longer Mike Panera. You are Mr. Ferocious. Oh. <laughs> I said, why is that? He said, because that's the way you play. Oh, that's great. You are Mr. Ferocious. <laughs> and I said, thank you, Frank. Thank oh, you. Wow. you know? And that's so awesome. he said, when you come to L.A., as I know you guys will, when you leave Miami, call me. I'll get you a record deal. We'll get you set up. It was so nice. And then, you know, played with the cream. The Grateful Dead. Now, if you remember, we were having love-ins on Sundays yes. uh, at the Reynolds, park. Reynolds Park. Reynolds Park. So the, all the big bands that were coming to play with us would also play at the love-in mm -hmm. for free That's that right. Sunday. Yeah. Well, we, the Grateful Dead showed up, and I was kind of, you know, in all of them, you know, at that time. So Jerry Garcia got there first, and he's on his stage setting up his, his amp. And I'm on my stage alone setting up my amp. And I just wave, you know, I am my... Hey, hey. So I start tuning, and it created like a drone, you know, ding, 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 ding. Then he started going, ding, 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 he's tuning his. And I went, ooh, I could hear the interaction. We started jamming, gave two guitars, Jerry Garcia and myself, for about an hour and a half. On two different stages? On the two stages. Oh, yeah, which was supposed to be a sound check for both, but none of the other members oh, wanted okay. to even come on stage and interrupt nice. this jam. I missed that one. It was like drone, you oh, know, wow, modal stuff. Wow. It was very heavy, and so we became friends. And then we went to the Love It at Reynolds Park. Well, people are saying, don't drink the orange juice because somebody that came from San Francisco with a dead is putting LSD in the orange juice. And I said, you're kidding, right? He said, no, why? I said, I just drank half a pitcher. Half a pitcher of the orange juice. I said, no, nah, probably it, it wasn't that one. About a half hour later, I, I never take an LSD or any, any of those kind of psychedelics. The ground starts opening up. Oh, man. People's faces start changing. I had what would be called a classic bad trip, oh. a bad trip. Are you on stage when this is happening? No, not yet. Oh, They're not getting yet. ready. We're getting ready to go on stage. Oh my God. I'm just backstage watching this, and I'm going, guys, I'm tripping. <laughs> and they said, just just tell yourself you're tripping, and don't don't believe anything you see. Just say, no, that's not really there. I'm going, I'm saying that, man, but it ain't going away. <laughs> oh, man. So I went on stage, man, oh, completely psychedelic. Oh, and, yeah, we got to about the second, second song, and all of a sudden I just froze. I couldn't move. Oh. My hand, my fingers, nothing. That was it. They came and picked me up <laughs> and carried me off stage. Well, uh, now I remember that. Do you? I do remember people telling me that you had to be picked up off stage. I had to be picked up, <laughs> and I went I went off stage in a horizontal position. Yes, a lot of local people told me something happened with Pinera. He stopped yeah. playing. That's exactly